Thank you for tuning in once again with Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. What I have here is the Autotech SS3500.4 Class AB amplifier uh, that you can see on the previous video in the corner here. And as you notice, I have the output transistors reinstalled into channel one. Uh, as I was probing around trying to uh, check the resistance uh, between the uh, pre-driver circuit, the actual lead of my meter, I use uh, needle leads on my fluke, poked right through a solder trace. So that prompted me to start checking uh, solder joints on the traces so I did find several traces that were, did not have good solder connections so I resoldered all those and sure enough uh, the board came back to life so the board is fully functional again it was just a bad solder joint so you can see on your uh, scope image there up in the upper left hand corner we do have output on channel one now so that's promising I didn't have to replace any parts but the unfortunate thing is is I really was unable to guide you through how I check for for I check for faulty pre drivers so I'm just gonna go through a quick rundown of this area of the circuit uh, so maybe there's some people that needs a little help in understanding how these pre-drivers work and function. I'm not going to go into complete absolute detail on how this is put together because every manufacturer does this differently. So really it comes down to the under basic understanding of a diode. So here's uh, two images that you really need to understand how that diode function works in order to understand transistors. So I'm just going to go through the layout of how the manufacturer laid this board out. So this bank here is referenced to negative rail and this bank is referenced to positive rail. So you have both an NPN and a PNP transistor uh, on the negative rail and on the positive rail. So what this is doing, minus the feedback, I'm not going to get into feedback because this gets that gets pretty in depth. So you have to understand how feedback works in a class A B amplifier uh, to know how these two banks integrate with each other to complete a sine wave. So these transistors are swinging the signal on the base of these, either positive or negative, uh, based on what they're referenced to. So like I said, this is referenced to negative rail, this is referenced to positive rail. So if you feed both these a signal, you're going to see the sine wave go from a split sine wave to a full sine wave. So you'll see that sine wave, again this is not including detail of the feedback. So this is the base of your output transistors. This is a PNP transistor, this is an NPN transistor. Well, so your PNP transistor here on this amplifier is referenced to the negative rail and your NPN transistor is referenced to positive rail. And the base itself swings positive to negative rail referenced to zero volts. So one driver bank is going to pull it positive, the other driver bank, bank is going to pull it negative. And that's doing that both on the NPN and the PNP transistor. From there you have the emitters which are going through your emitter resistors and just to give you an idea of that, sorry I'm, not, I'm a bad artist. Um, it, 
it's set up in this fashion. So you have your NPN transistor, your emitter, and your PNP transistor, your emitter. They both go through emitter resistors, very low value emitter resistors. Those tie together to go to your output. So that's swinging the signal if your gain was high enough, I should say. Uh, swinging that signal all the way to positive rail and all the way to negative rail. So as you can see on the scope there, um, I can adjust my input signal here on my Heath kit, my IG1272. So I'm right at positive and negative rail. And you can see when you exceed the signal, you start to get the clipping of that positive and negative rail, the top and bottom there. See how they're flattening out? So that's as far as those transistors will go because there's nothing left above or below that. And that's where you start getting into your DC output uh, on your output terminals. And the, that's when you start heating things up, heating your speakers up, and ultimately killing a channel in an amplifier. So that's your emitters. Going through your emitter resistors, they tie together to form your output. Now another thing to note on class AB amplifiers is you're going to have a series of resistors that are watching for your overcurrent. They're paying attention to the voltage difference on your emitter resistors, which here on this board, these two resistors here are coming off of your emitter and going back to this transistor right here. So this transistor I have marked on the board here over current is watching the voltage difference going back up to the uh, protection circuit of the TL494. So when it sees a potential there, it will shut that 494 down and I can actually trip that circuit for you. And you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a red light now. Well, you can't because my image is blocking it, but now I have a red light on and now we have no output. No input, no output, no rail voltage. Because I tripped this overcurrent transistor. So if I remove my power off of my current limited power supply and then reapply power, of course I get the signal back. So that's a, that's a quick rundown of this. The signal comes through this resistor, feeds both uh, the pre-driver transistors here on the section that's referenced to negative rail, the section that's referenced to positive rail, swings the signal both positive and negative, the emitter of these two transistors go back to your output transistors. So the one that's referenced off positive rail goes back, the emitter of that goes back to the base of this 5198. And then the emitter of the negative reference transistor goes back to the base of your PNP transistor of that 1941. So they're just using this section to swing the bases positive and negative reference to zero volts of these two output transistors. The protection circuit watches the voltage across the emitter resistors which goes back to the transistor which goes back to your TL494 protection circuit and you'll see each channel has one of these transistors in place. So that's pretty much the rundown of the pre-driver circuit. So if you ever see a signal on your scope that looks like half of a signal, then you know you have a pre-driver problem because you're missing half the signal. So if you have both banks that are working fine, you're gonna have you're gonna have the full signal referencing positive and negative voltage. So whenever I see half of a signal, I know that I have a bad pre-driver. 
and just let's see if I can show you what half of a signal looks like here. So I'm going to go back to the overcurrent circuit here that is watching. Let me see if I can get a good one here for you. Uh, all right, so this is just the protection circuit uh, watching the voltage on the emitter resistor. So that's half of a signal. So if I were to see this in the pre-driver section, then I know that I'm missing a section of the pre-driver. That's the rundown for this particular board. Like I said, not all boards are set up this way, uh, but knowing and understanding the flow of electrons through a diode, through a transistor, because that's all this really is, is a transistor is two diodes in one, uh, will help you understand what's going on with the voltage and current on these circuits. So these class ABs, they are pretty, uh, they do have quite a few sections that you can uh, dissect individually. Uh, you have your plus minus 15 volts here. Um, that controls the voltage to your preamp. Your preamp is all controlled through capacitors and resistors to uh, create your slopes and your crossover points. You have your output sections, which is pretty obvious. They're all laid out the same. They're mirror images, which really helps. If you have a problem here, you can always measure over on a good channel. You have your power supply section you have your drive section and you have your rectification section so amplifiers are pretty simple straightforward again as long as you understand the concepts of a transistor and the concepts of a diode you have it made uh, if you have any questions concerns or comments please leave them down below um, I'm always available I'm always more than happy to answer questions and to end this if you have any suggestions on a camera I am really looking to upgrade my camera but I have no idea what kind of camera to get what to use I am clueless when it comes to cameras I can tell you about electrons but I really can't tell you about cameras so please if you have any ideas um, or suggestions please uh, leave them down below email me uh, my website you can get to me directly at ellensburgamplifier.com um, I'm always open for suggestions. Thank you for watching, guys and gals. I will see you on the next one.